Hey there, winos. This is Vince.Wine. On this dark night, I feature two dark wines to satisfy our dark appetite. Tonight, we've got Dark Horse Cabernet Sauvignon versus Apothic Dark. Let's pit these two dark beasts. How many more times can I say the word dark against each other on tonight's Wine Lab? Thanks for joining me. Before we get started tonight, if you want to be a winoceros, hit subscribe on this channel to become a wino tonight. I put out new videos every single Saturday, so be sure to hit that bell icon to stay notified for more great wine content. Okay, let's start with Apothic Dark. I really love this label. It is gorgeous, and it's just got this really sort of charcoal feel to it. It's got these old English, like Dracula, kind of writing on it to signify that sort of dark creation in the bottle there. It's a red blend, 2017 vintage, and I'm not exactly sure what the makeup of the wine is. We'll find out. Check out the cork. I noticed right away it's actually black inside there as well, so they really went the whole way with the sort of darkness. I think I want like a word counter on this video to see how many times I say the word dark. <laughs> Check out this really cool cork, completely black wax cork there with those intricate apothic emblems on there. That's pretty cool. Okay, in the glass here, I, of course, I, I like to be thematic or dramatic, and I want to do this at night, but I cannot see at night. I keep forgetting that. From what I can see, it is um, kind of medium concentration here. It's got a really nice violet rim around there, and then the sort of deep... <laughs> dark color in the center of the bowl. Let's get it on the nose. Oh my gosh. Okay, the first thing I'm getting here is just this like luscious cocoa. I'm getting like this really deep sort of mocha out of this, but there's also this toastiness on there too. That's actually super inviting. I can tell there's going to be some strong amounts of oak on here, and I hope it's not like overly sweet. I don't expect this to be dry. I know from the past that apothic wines are going to have a little residual sugar, but let's hope that this is not just like a mouthful of syrup. Um, let's take the palate. Okay, if you're a fan of this channel, you know that I like love gimmicky wines. I'm really into gimmicky stuff, but no joke, it's just so rich and inviting. I probably am going to enjoy this quite a bit here. Um, after some of the inexpensive wines, I tend not to really finish the bottle. I just like, I love to check them out. I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff, but it's got more of a drier finish than I would have anticipated. So gosh, this is really nice. It's really rich on the palate. This is just hitting me sort of in all the right places here. I'm getting dark black fruit on here and it has a really long finish too. I'm pretty surprised. I can still taste it even right now. Think of like a really rich fudge brownie with like some raspberries on it drizzled in like dark chocolate. That's exactly what I'm getting here. This is um and it, the thing is it's not all the way to dessert wine either. It has a proper dry finish with some medium tannin on there. I could actually see eating something like this with barbecue beef ribs. I would love like like a sweet and glazy sauce over beef ribs and this wine and you'd pretty much be happy all night long. Apothic Dark, um, you guys killed it with this and go check out my last video where I did Apothic. I'll leave a link. On that one I tried their super gimmicky stuff. It was the Inferno that had the whiskey barrel infusion and that drank a lot like this but that one was, I kind of want to say a little bit more sweet and then I had the, <laughs> the brew. <laughs> Don't I'll, I'll let you find out what happened with the brew. Um, but this is really a, a very drinkable wine and I'm looking forward to having a couple glasses of this. Okay, let's move on to Dark Horse. Now, this is going to be my very first experience with Dark Horse wines. I have seen them kind of for many, many years now, walking through sort of that mid-tier wine section in grocery stores. It is in that sort of $10 price range, and I've kind of passed it off as a low-quality wine, but they're getting super popular. I've run into a number of flavors. I actually found that the tasting notes on the Cabernet Sauvignon were much closer to Apothic Dark, so I figured this might be a better comparison. Let's check it out. Check out that capsule there. That is really cool. It's just got like the bull horn. Okay, my expectations aren't like super high right now, but you never know. You could end up being pleasantly surprised. You know, these sort of fun gimmicky style wines are just made to be super drinkable. Apothic Dark was definitely drinkable, and I'm hoping for the same quality level here with Dark Horse. Cool cork too. I really love that. Okay, let's give it a go here, and I'm just going to rinse my glass. 
and let's give that a shot. Yeah, beautiful color. Looks very similar to the Apothic. It looks like it might be slightly less concentrated. Yeah, I can see my hand a little more clearly through this glass here, but once again, I'm, I'm a very brilliant young man and decided to do this at night, so I can't quite see what it looks like in my glass. Let's just jump straight to the nose. Ooh, whoa, okay. Hang on a sec. <laughs> Okay, this is all coffee. Actually, if you were to tell me that this was the Apothic Brew, it's got a really similar nose. This is all, I'm, I'm talking like coffee beans here. I, I can't get past it, actually. It's all about that coffee nose. That is pretty incredible. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm having PTSD here. The last time I said this about a wine that smelled like coffee, I ended up nearly puking it out. So I really hope that this is gonna work. Oh, here we go. Okay. Eh. Uh, what can I eh, you know, um, I, I literally have no words, um, I, I there's nothing, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing to be said here, um, I'm pretty disappointed, at least I didn't spit it out, but for my first interaction with Dark Horse Wines, um, this is just not impressive. Okay, so what's it missing? It, it doesn't have the weightiness of the Apothic, it doesn't have, um, that syrupiness, it's not hitting me in all the right places, I said it might be a little less concentrated, and I was right. On the palate, this is just super light. The nose is really pretty, but um, it just doesn't translate to the palate at all. You really lose it once it gets there. I have no finish. There's just, I think I'm still tasting the Apothic actually. Um, there's there's just no finish on this wine either. Um, there's really not a lot in the way of structure here. There's just, it's like drinking air basically. There There's not um, really a lot happening with this wine. I'm super disappointed. I'm not really getting any cab notes. There's fruit, there's oak, there's toast, and there's a hint of tannin, but this is really just like wine flavored juice or something like that. I I'm not having a good time with it. I, I would not feel comfortable having this on my table by any by any means. We're gonna go back to this one here. Oh yeah, that already looks better. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. Dark Horse, I would say that that was a TKO. Apothic really knocked it out of the park for me tonight. Okay, well, I know that that was a pretty quick one, but I was really excited to pit these two against each other. Um, I kind of wanted to have that dark theme, and it didn't quite work out the way I wanted. The Apothic was just a much stronger contender. Dark Horse just came in flabby and completely unprepared, so throw in the towel, Dark Horse, you're not gonna work out tonight. Do you winos have any positive experiences with Dark Horse? Um, if there's a really cool dark horse out there, please let me know and I'd be super open to checking it out. But until then, winos, don't forget to share this video with your wine friends. Oh, leave me a like, that really does help. And on your next dark night, drink safe and drink well.